the art of the cold open is something that's not really that appreciated. You turn the mic on, you start rolling, and you start talking to introduce the show. People think, oh, that's easy. It's not. It involves a lot of time and a lot of thought. And sometimes a little bit of humor and oftentimes a lot of heart. Well, I didn't have any of that today. But anyway, it's a brand new Smart List. Smart List. Um, a few weeks ago, now it's a few weeks ago, Jason and I went up to Pebble Beach, as you know, and then you came up with Scotty. Right. Like little angels flying up. From, Wait, yeah. that's very it nice. It was really I, nice of you to do that. I was, was so, we were so happy to do it. It was very generous of you. And Sean is very generous. You're a very, very good friend and a very, you're, a, you have a very generous spirit. Well, I love you both very yeah, much. We love you very, well, very much. Will and I were talking how we could both learn something from you. Yeah, we were. <laughs> me, me more than Will. Uh, He's well, that's going to be like a seminar. Yeah. Yeah, mean, him more than you, meaning that he has more to learn than I do is what he meant. <laughs> yeah, no, I think they got it. Wait, Will, are you really that tired still? Dude, we, oh my God, we got home last night. Oh, that's right. Well, I saw Jason last night for I, know, I feel great. Minutes. Will's a little more tired than I am because he did a lot more winning than I did. Uh, wait, uh, wait a minute. Let's talk he, about that. I made the, I made the so, cut. listener, this was a this was this was a golf tournament, listener. Uh, which a Pebble we're not Beach Pro Am. Proud to say, um, yeah. but we are proud that it was it was to serve the, the, all the all the the well deserving charities up there in the Monterey Peninsula. Um, sure. And uh, get that in. A bunch of really great people up there running that thing for years and years and years. And um, Willie and I did it this year. And uh, Will uh, came in second place in the closest to the whole contest. That's uh, amazing. It's which true. was incredible, and uh, and then the whole tournament itself, he made what is uh, the coveted thing, which is to make the cut, which means that you're uh, one of the top twenty five teams that gets to play the final day. Yeah, it that's amazing. It should be the thing against like pros. No, no, no. It should be noted. It should Alongside be noted. pros. It should be noted. My game is so bad, and I happened to get lucky on the ho on the holes that mattered where I could score. Other holes, you would have watched and you would have thought. Now, this guy just stepped. He's never seen a golf club before, and he just stepped onto the course. Yeah. So some of them were so bad. My 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 playing partner, my pro, was the Canadian guy, Taylor uh, Pendrith. Swift. Uh, what's up, Taylor? Uh, it, not Taylor Swift. Um, okay. That would have been interesting. And Taylor ended up doing quite well in the tournament, and uh, and I was texting with him afterwards, and we both agreed that I showed him all the shots not to hit. Ah, uh, so that he could so you do. Did it. provide value. <laughs> so, wow, so, what a great so, value! To what not to do. So he'd yeah. be like, "Oh, don't do that. Huh. Don't do what he did." Don't, anyway, but let me ask you something. For as long as you guys were up there golfing, which was an entire week every day, it was I know it was a long. long it was it was my my bad on that. Like the repetitive motion of golfing, doesn't that like wreak havoc on your body every day? Yes, I was tired. My definitely, and I said to Jason when he. When he did, said, hey, we're going to go up the Sunday before and we're going to play that day and every day leading up to the tournament, I said, you don't think that's too much? He's like, there's no such thing as enough. This is what we're doing. We're going to prepare. Well, He's a total I, this, I have addiction issues. That's yeah. probably for another podcast. But. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. What, so, But you can't be addicted to playing golf. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. I, I, I can I can find a nice addiction in most things, but um, uh, fortunately, it's all pointed towards healthy stuff yeah, nowadays. Yeah, I actually I actually thought I was like I, I don't want to play again. Jason and I are probably su supposed to play Friday, and I thought I'm not going to play till Friday. I don't want to even look at my. And then this morning I thought. <clears throat> I did have a good drive on 18 yesterday <laughs> in the final hole at Pebble. The weather's so I just nice gonna, today. I might just go work on that just to capitalize on that. Did you go hit that. balls today? I almost did. <gasps> like a sicko. And I was like, Someone's a sicko. Listen, did you, do you, um, when you eat, did you get sick of the food? Wasn't it the same food every single night for an entire week? Wasn't it like no. eating at a dorm? Mm, no. No, 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 there's really nice restaurants up great there. Great restaurants, and, really great folks up there, yeah. Great I restaurant. did take advantage of the opportunity to eat a bunch of things I wouldn't normally find in my home. That's yeah. true. Um, it was and, fun uh, to watch Jason eat. 
I will yeah. say, to watch him eat food. Well, you ordered was well, really before fun. I even hit the table each time. I would I'd ask the hostess taking <laughs> us to the table. Do you guys have fried calamari or anything? Uh, and then and they, they remember they go they go uh, they go. Now you, we were there, Sean. And they go, I, would you guys like something to drink? And we were like, yeah, I'll get some water and I'll take a diet coke. And Jason goes, yeah. And, and if you can uh, find any bread back there, I go. Do you want them to put that in a glass with ice? Like <laughs> <laughs> they're getting drink order. He's asking for bread. Just any sort of carbs, sweet, salty. But then he, matter. but then you eat so healthy these massive salads, and then Will yeah. ordered fried calamari, and you All were right. just fucking digging into this that. This is why thing. I like, eat healthy, so I can splurge when I really want it and eat. I it. know, I know. Yeah. It was like a shovel. I know. It's unbelievable. Then, uh, but we, Sean, we had a nice time, and then Jason left early. Yeah. Uh, to go Shocker. get a massage or give a massage, I can't remember which one you said. I I'm, again, another different podcast, probably. Sure. <laughs> so. And then we had some dessert. We, you and Scotty and I had some nice dessert. Yeah, I ordered extra ice cream on mine, and you had the tiramisu. I did. You do love you do love ice cream, right, Sean? And it, it's not Me like too. it's not like exotic flavors. It's just, you're like you're a vanilla guy, aren't you? That's it. Truly, just vanilla. Just vanilla. God. Yeah. And also for ice cream too, right? Wait, but do you know oh, something? Sorry. I'm, <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait but do you know guy? something? I'm not making this up. Do you know why people like the taste of vanilla? Oh boy, insert joke no, here. No, no, because it's true. it makes them feel alive. Yeah. Why is that, robot? <laughs> no, because it it reminds them of the taste of mother's milk. Huh? Huh? Yeah, it's the closest thing to the taste of mother's what, milk. Nine out of ten babies were pulled on this, and there's got to be a there's got to be a one eyed mother joke in there somewhere. We'll work I on know. it. No, it's the one-eyed wonder bread mother. of ice cream. Let's be honest, though. Uh, so. I, I love ice cream too. If you had, let's just do this before we get to our guest. Jason, it's your guest today, right? So I'm sure they're yeah, waiting. Yeah, it is. Let's tighten it up. What What do we? What number one dessert? They They go. You get one shot for one dessert for the rest of your life. You only get one more. What is the thing that you're having, Jason? You go first. One. Longer. I mean, I've just surprised myself with cobbler came to my mind what kind that's not any bad. kind of cobbler that's not bad yeah. warm peach fruit berry terrible. rhubarb whatever it is because oh. i like that crumbly graham crackery uh, right so if you had situation. one okay cobbler okay like shawnee oh well, you know it already just one one scoop of vanilla, vanilla ice cream ice cream like really? a ma massive scoop of ice cream with like hershey syrup and whipped cream on it like a sundae okay like a you sundae know, you're, tr you're trash you're, you're just trash, trash. you're trash okay because <laughs> i was gonna say that if that was your last meal like it was like like you you were about to go before the firing squad and you asked for a, a scoop of vanilla ice cream, I'd be like, just shoot him now. <laughs> yeah. Forget it. Just for, right just in the for mouth. The, just shoot him. The best. <laughs> I think I would take my thing is I would have, a, I think would be cake. Yeah. What kind? Yeah, like, like a yellow cake with chocolate frosting. That's all that is. Remember yeah. the cake lady? Did the, yeah, cake, the cake lady cake make lady, you that? The cake lady. She did. She made me a, a, a cake. Yeah, that's pretty generic. But I too. do love a cobbler, though. You know, they also make like a like. You a, can't have any of mine. No, no, I know, but like an apple brown Betty. Have you ever had that before? It's like a cobbler too. It's so good with yeah, like. I love ugh. that. Anyway, but I can't do warm fruit other than apples. No, no, no. Uh, insert joke here, Will. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you mean no warm you, fruit jokes? Well, for Mykonos, our Sean? well, Mykonos comes to mind. It's filled with warm. <laughs> in the summertime. <laughs> they're yeah. really you kind. All in, they're really you warm. You make yeah. an exception. No, I mean that they have a lot of a lot of figs. Yeah. Nice. I get what you've done there. Leave it. Leave it. Leave and it. And leave figs. it. I haven't done a fucking thing. You have. You did it. Okay. Great opening patter. Incredible. But uh, something that's even more incredible What's is that? that yes. today. Today oh, is so exciting. Sean? Merch Madness. Merch Madness. That's short yeah. for merchandise, everybody. And I it's a little it. pun on the basketball tournament. All in one. So you're welcome. And it's for, it's it's like a two. You think they don't know that? Yeah, well, sometimes you got to explain. You know, Tracy, she doesn't understand college basketball or <laughs> the short term for merchandise. No, we, the reason we started to giving Tracy, uh, uh, like informing her of stuff was because it was all inside showbiz stuff. Now you're just getting to, you think she doesn't know just basic life stuff? She also doesn't know about college basketball. What are you <laughs> talking about? She, she lives good. in Wisconsin, she, man. But here's what the listener needs to know. It's like this merch store has got it's so it's great. Got, it's got it's got smartless t-shirts and phone joggers. cases and and yeah. there there are, there are people on there that jog right there's joggers mm -hmm. um, there's sweats the sweats are great the hats are great yeah all this stuff is great and it's for the, the it's for the uh, fans for just like you you, you yeah. know like that want a piece of us 
Well, that well, sounds well, gross. Yeah, let's not okay. that really. yeah, right. not, yeah. They don't like us that much. But yeah, if okay. you want some fun, if you're sick and tired of your phone case yeah. and you want Sean's dumbass face on your phone, yep. go to <laughs> www.wonderyshop.com slash smartless. By the mm-hmm. way, you only said two W's. You said www. Like a fucking oh. dummy. First of all, nobody says World that anymore. War II. But at least if you are going to do it, say all three. W yeah. W W. There you go. That's World Wide Web. That's short for World Wide Web. Did you World know Wi- that? Yes, World Wide Web. Dot one dot wondery shop dot com slash, slash smartless. Don't need to sing it. Why not? Here we go. Our guest today. Our guest today is a friend, a filmmaker, an innovator, and an actor. Oh, oh. I've been lucky enough to work with him a few times, and he is as much fun to work with as he is to hang around with. <laughs> uh, he uh, he's acted in about fifty movies, what? directed nine movies, what? made a couple of TV shows, and a couple of children. And oh. by the way, he's responsible for the best Christmas movie ever, and for basically I know exactly starting Marvel's is. presence in Hollywood. Please welcome Mr. John Favreau. Favreau. Get it out here, John. I'm so Hello. glad you're still awake. I'm sorry for the long, the long patter up front. Um, That's amazing. I listened to you know I listened to the the pod. Uh, yeah, is it, are they always that long at the top, or only when you're excited to get into the ring? <laughs> it's weird. I'm a little starstruck for Smartless, <laughs> even though individually I'm quite comfortable with all of you. Yeah. Johnny Favreau, oh my gosh, it's so nice to see you. John, you're so Thanks cool. for repping. Uh, by the way, I know, listener, uh, you can't see, but there's a baby Yoda on the shelf behind Sean up there. And, and oh, you didn't God, do that right. just for me. No, yeah, he does no idea. You didn't know it was going to be me. Yeah. That's Grogu. I'm touched. Exactly. Will and I need to clear the decks because Sean's going to take this interview over <laughs> He climbs let's up your Scotty. Star let's, Wars let's get into colon. it. Let's no, get but into Scotty, it. Scotty, get pull up a chair for Scotty. Scotty, and go ahead, out. guys. But we, but Johnny, I told you at that last dinner. I think it was like a year ago. I said yes. that um, how much like I'm I like you know I'm so impressed and like beyond. I can't even believe it's ridiculous. You. Like I just think you're amazing. But but. For, wait, let's start there. Don't you hate it when people call it Baby Yoda? His name's Grogu. No, I we could. Every, People have lots of different, you know, there's Strider and Aragorn. There's, you know, everybody's yeah. got lots of names. So. Yeah, Sean, just because pe- people can enjoy it, just because they don't know the fucking nerd name for the fucking <laughs> the puppet. No, but in all fairness, <laughs> in the beginning it was confusing because people thought it was actually Yoda as a baby, and that just threw off the time frame. But it is Yoda as a baby. people. No. Oh, oh, it's not. It threw off. The, oh, no, the time not. frame was it's wrong. Not. It's not. Hey, yeah. Go Yoda's ahead, John. Long gone. Dress down, yeah, Sean, right now. Grogu shows up because this oh, is right, after, after after Return of the Jedi. Jedi. Yeah. Dumb. Right. God, when 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 Luke Skywalker hey. showed up in the last fucking guys, episode of the Man, guys, yeah. cool, it, was, cool it, cool it. The ladies, <laughs> the ladies are getting so heated up listening. We'll to get this. to Flake soon. By no. the way, fan of Flake. <laughs> no, I watched every episode of Flake, and I'm waiting. I sure did. Oh, Let's on. do the flake quiz. I'm ready. Go, go. I Willie. was devoted to that show, and I, I like the neighborhood too. Because Venice, I'm. Uh, mm-hmm. I know, I know that I know the neighborhood. You really captured uh, uh, it Venice. Was, I thought it, was it was like really Venice cool. porn. It was Venice porn, and uh, we had the great Wally Fister who directed a bunch in the yes. first season, and he set the tone of how Beautiful. it would look. I think it's. The I most love that yeah. show. I really thanks, did. man. I really appreciate that. But, but. So wait, so to, let's lay this to rest once for all. I thought it was Baby Yoda too. I no. really did. So what's the deal? It's Grogon. Or just Grogon. Get, get, get Scott in <laughs> here. That's the uh, anime show I'm working on. Grogon. No, Grogu is Grogu. the name as was revealed. Uh, he was. He's a baby of the same species as well, Yoda. Well, that's what I meant. That's what. Yes. I meant. No. No. You're, you're right. You're right. In did that he, regard. Did they do like a species reveal? Did they do like a big? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was green. Yeah. We popped the balloon. And it was green. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. There's so many things oh, I can ask you. What about, what, yeah, let's I, I let's get just, into it. So what? Mandalorian. So before we get into the Marvel stuff, because I want to say I want to know this too, and and uh, I've known you a long time, but I don't know understand how, because you are you are, in a lot of ways, this might be controversial. You kind of started the Marvel. Uh, I said it phenomenon, in the intro, in a, in a way, right? I, I directed Iron Man, and yes. with Mr. Downey, our mutual friend, all of yes. our mutual friends. He, you know, we that was the first MCU film. Yeah, you and Downey created a, 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 just a, a, a monster, a BMW, whatever it is. And had you yeah. shit the bed on that, it would have been Hollywood bad. would not be floating today. 
<laughs> yeah, you, I mean, it, it is the big balloon of, there that are, keeps it all There are a lot of people up. earning $25, $30 million paychecks, actors, who, who should be calling you and thanking you and cutting you a check every month, by the Do way. Do you get a muffin basket or anything from <laughs> I get muffins. Like, Mrs. Mrs. Chris Beasley Evans muffin. or the Downies of the world? <laughs> yeah. Mrs. Beasley. So, so, but I want to say, so I want to say, so we, so you're part of that, not just part of it, you help create that whole world, the MCU, but then all of a sudden, you're you're doing the Mandalorian and you're yes. doing all this other stuff and now you're like creating this part of this other whole I universe. Even... How did that come about? That all that stuff. Yeah, I was doing. So I had done I had done the Marvel film. Uh, and two how, wait, of sorry. How did you get chosen, or how did you pit like for Iron Man? Like for well, remember back then it wasn't a big deal, right? It was right. kind of it was a little bit like Moneyball. Where they were finding <laughs> undervalued uh, talent. Sure, <laughs> a utility director. That's I was affordable. A, I was a good. I had a good on base average. Uh -huh. I was a. I was a salty old knuckleballer that knew how to get people <laughs> out. But I, I didn't have. A, I didn't have a sexy heater. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? Am I saying that right, Jason? Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And Downey was it was was your Mickey Hatcher. He right? was the guy. You know, he was again worked for. You know, wanted the gig. Really fought for it too. And, Did he really? Uh, Oh yeah, yeah. He had he That's he actually great. had to read, believe it or not, to oh convince the people. Do you people. still have that tape? Uh, I think it's out there. I think it's public. Like it's oh, uh, really? it's on YouTube. Yeah, he was he was amazing from the first time he. Of you course. know, it was so yeah. obvious. Yeah. And I knew that if I had him in that role, like I got the whole tone. And of course, after he signed on, all the other actors wanted to work on this thing because of him and because of the tone of what it was going to be, because everybody was really you know a fan of his from way back. And so we pulled together a really great cast, like an independent film, and we, you know, we we found we found that tone, and uh, yeah. combined it with the, the the CGI. That was it was CGI was good enough at that point to do hard surfaces like a metal suit flying, and so people really got to see something that you wouldn't have been able to portray a few years before. That that mm -hmm. all started to build momentum, and they started to launch other franchises off of uh, that leading yeah. to the Avengers and after that I went I, I did um I had what I oh I did you know I did Cowboys and Aliens after I that. love that movie right. so mm -hmm. I was back on the on the uh on the naughty list uh after that one because that, yeah, but one that was another admirably you know big swing that you took on and I thought did a great job with thank you it didn't yeah, do yeah. well at the box office and you know how it is in Hollywood that's not they don't like when that happens right so so there I was I, I cooled off a bit and worked my way back up uh, with the movie Chef, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that kind of got I, me back. I, which I told Fantastic. you, Fever, I remember telling you specifically in person how great I think that movie is mm -hmm. to this Thank day. You. Not was, is, because it exists and it's a great... That is a great movie. If you haven't seen John Favreau's Chef, I implore you to go it's see so it. Good. It's mm -hmm. so good, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, I appreciate really that. really great. Oh. Thank you. Love and it was film. it was a special one because it was like can I, I like I started off doing smaller films where I would write write them and be in them and or direct them and and then it was nice to be able to still be able to do that and find something that I could really feel passionate about that one uh, didn't have a big budget but it did really well for what it cost and then uh, I ended up because of my visual effects background getting involved with I think the next thing was Jungle Book and that was a hit. And yes. then I really started to yeah. get under the hood with the CGI and the effects. And, and, and I, was, I was a bit of a Luddite in the beginning. I kind of shied away from CGI, uh, mostly because it wasn't done well in most films. And as I learned more and more about it, I started to uh, help innovate the tools uh, to make CGI I think look better than it had, and then we did Lion King after that, and then and the and thing then that you created the, the the wall thing. Yeah, so for out. the Mandalorian, we created real time rendering. It's called Star, in, not Stargate. Um, ILM calls it uh, stagecraft. stagecraft. Stagecraft, yes, right. Yeah, yeah. But but it's it's basically using game engine technology in video walls and creating parallax, so you can move the camera. And the backgrounds are basically captured in camera instead of after the fact. But, but what makes it what, what what makes it efficient for for what Sean calls the the wall thing, is that uh, <laughs> thank you Sean, um, is, is that incredible. you can basically shoot one direction all the time and just keep changing the background. Is yeah, that so correct? the actor feels like they're actually there. 
Right, so it's not green screen, right? So, so yeah. you could see the best. So the actors could see the background, yeah. but it allows you, yeah, will to 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 film and just change over like you would with a video game what the backgrounds are and all it's that's like acting in front of a movie screen. We we yeah. use that uh, we use that in the uh, in our flag means death that I did with Taika and those guys. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. It was yeah. very well used there yeah. too. Yeah. I thought. Yeah. For the ocean, Is that what yeah. they used in Gravity, the movie Gravity? So Gravity, they used a, um, a system that definitely inspired what we were doing. It yeah. didn't have all the parallax, but it would create interactive light with LED panels, which is what we surround yeah. the set with. Yeah. They would have individual panels on a bot and dolly system, which is basically a robot that was used for car construction, so they could move in and out light sources, yeah. creating wow. interactive light on the astronauts, and then... When they put the backgrounds in, the interactive light is really the hard part to do in post production. Mm -hmm. So uh, Alfonso Cuaron, uh, yeah. and uh, they came up with a, a great system that we ended up using panels like that in Jungle Book. So everybody's sort of taken baby steps, but around similar technologies, and we yeah. just had a big breakthrough on. Dude, Android. that is, just hearing you talk about this stuff, and you're a smart guy, you know, and today's quick, Doug, Douglas Trumbull, yeah, quick, quick learner. I mean, you you came up, you're making. I mean, you're ma making independent film. A lot of people got to know you from the film that you wrote, obviously, uh, Swingers, which is one of the yeah. all-time great, one of the most Incredible. quotable films of all time to Absolutely. this day. And, and I moved here the year that that came out, and it was oh, all yeah. L.A., you know, Bay. I was just, like, blown away <laughs> yeah, by, like, you, me having the experience that you wrote and directed on the screen at the same time. And I from left. Chicago, too, right? Yeah. We were both. And yeah. from Chicago. And Sean, you're because Sean's so money, he doesn't even know how money is, but... <laughs> But so, because you, but no, because you've got these claws and you don't even know how to, you got these claws. So, oh my God. So, oh yeah, I'm going deep. So, you got it all. <laughs> so, I'm blushing. Uh, I know. Uh, so, anyway. So, While we're but, here, though, big shout out to the man who is the best at what he does, Vince Vaughn, is oh, just fucking a, forget it. a genius. Yes. And uh, a big hello to him. If you want if you want to laugh your fucking face off, stand next to Vince Vaughn for one minute. Yeah. Yeah. You will, John, we, uh, I just you, worked with him like a couple of weeks ago on uh, Curb. Oh, really? Just, oh, oh, Yeah, just good. one really quick thing. I was hoping like, he'd be back. Yeah. What's it like to work on that show? I'm such a fan. He's great on it, my too. My God, yeah. it's crying laughing. He's I mean, so fun. So I, went fun. To this, I went to this charity event one a few years ago, and I ended up sitting next to Vince, and the guy, the guy, the guy who was running, it was this sort of older guy, and he was not good at doing it. And bitches went in my ear the whole time, and he kept going, this is the face man that they picked? This, this is the face man? And I was crying. And everybody's no, looking at no me. one faster. Because he's in my ear, yeah, and I'm crying. No, no, no. Forget but it. who even has that term, face man, at face the man. ready? Dude, he's just dude, got so me many with original. original. But, so, but I want to get back to my original point. But, but so you, before you, we get off that, one yeah, of my sorry. favorite uh, Bateman performances is in a Vince Vaughn film in Dodgeball. <laughs> Is oh, the, uh, yeah. That's the Ocho, when you're on the Ocho, that was with the hair, and that was like a half day, you told me once? It was, it was about a half day. It is yeah. some of the fun, let me, let, let's just go around the horn just for one more second. Uh, yeah. Another one of the almost funniest moments that if, if people have not seen it, first of all, you got to see Bateman in, in Dodgeball. But second of all, <laughs> I went to a screening, I actually intro to screening, did a Q&A, and didn't know you were in it, but Downey's film Senior you mm. and Downey with the piano, with him oh, singing in Shawnee. later Hosen. Sean, yeah. sorry, I'm oh. pointing. Sean, yeah. I don't know if you've if you've not seen it yet. That movie it is, is like the incredible. funniest three minutes of film yes. that I could remember seeing. But an incredibly when you moving are documentary. There with too. the water bottles, like yeah. arm full of water bottles for no reason. It's just like really serious documentary. And then Sean comes in there. And just starts like Harpo Marx and just starts ripping it up. And the piano, when you tell him to start again. Yeah. And then his father, just for those who don't know, Robert's father want, had some input in how this documentary was being made. And one of the, his requests is that he sang a certain song in later Hosen right. as part of it. What was the song that you uh, were playing, accompanying? Because you're a great oh, God, piano player. Schubert, and, and you were accompanying him. What was the, what was the bit? It was Schubert's uh, some opera piece, you know, like a like a something grand, st standard classic. Yeah, and yeah. he could really sing, and you could really yeah. play. And there he is in later Hosen with Sean being a very difficult taskmaster. Uh, it's just a wonderful little moment oh, that's of, very uh, of cinema there. But anyway, I'm sorry. I'm Sean, sorry. were we Sean? Were we at Downey's for lunch that a couple of summers ago when he asked you to do it? He just sort yeah, of no, said, it was on this on the podcast. It was on the podcast, right, yeah. from, that's what I thought. You, that's from, where you were, yeah. Yes, we were out there, and he was, and then you were like, yeah, and then all of a sudden, like, you're in the middle of it. And, and he's like, you maybe, 
And he goes, and he goes, maybe you should wear a tuxedo, and I'll wear a NATO hosen. <laughs> and I go, I don't understand what's happening. I don't understand this movie. I oh, you look like you were very on. comfortable. And didn't you say? Didn't you say we'll talk about it later, hosen? And he said that's what. That's how you came up with it. <laughs> Isn't that how that happened? And he left, and I said later, hosen. And yeah, later, hosen. Exactly. So, but anyway, so all right, so John, so we well, get back. Sorry about so, that. No, no, no. Of course. So you make, but you're, you, 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 you make like a seminal, independent comedy, which people don't really make anymore. Uh, that has stood the test of time. You did all these things. You were an actor, blah, blah, blah. and then all of a sudden you become a director, and not just a director, but a director who's making films that are very complicated, that using uh, all these effects. And as you and say, helping you develop technology too. And like, helping develop just, technology, like a new George Lucas. That is a whole skill set that you didn't know that you had that you had to learn on the job. Is that right? right? It was ba- it was baby steps up, but I, you know, I, honestly. I know we've had we've had conversations. Uh, Bateman and I have had conversations when we we started, you know, as as Jason was starting to direct, and it's like you learn. What's great about being an actor is it's like the best seat in the house to learn because you get to ask a million questions. You work with these talented people, mm-hmm. and you can learn. It's it's almost like an apprenticeship if you want to. Like you can. Ask a million questions. I used to be, I started off doing like background work. I think you did too, uh, Sean, in Chicago. Absolutely. Uh, Mad Dog and Glory. He's, with back, he's back at it. He's, yeah. back, he's right back to it. <laughs> <laughs> it was his true, pa- his true passion. It's he's his got his sports, sports fold-out chair. You we'll always uh, go back to your back first Back to love. basics. <laughs> I, think, I, yeah, I think that's... you got to stay uh, humble. Yeah. That's, uh, that's great. Stay humble. Good for you. Uh, but, you know, you sit there and you're watching and they don't let you like, close to anything or you know they keep you in holding and you get to be on the set it feels like a treat yeah and then you're like listening to everything everybody's saying and you're watching and then when i finally got a a supporting role on on the movie rudy out of chicago yeah so great also applause um thank you thanks listener uh (laughs) and 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 uh there i started asking questions of the dp and of the and they let me come around the editing room and 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 learn somebody famous shoot that didn't somebody famous shoot that? Was Oliver that Wood shot that. Well, I'm thinking of somebody else, but I'm Oliver sure he was Wood, very, very uh, good. great, great, great cinematographer. But you got to you got to kind of see the inside of that movie a little. You bit? You got to ask questions, I guess, is yeah. my point. Yeah. And and like I was always super curious. And even like when I would come, when I moved to first, I grew up in New York. I was in Chicago for a while learning improv, and I finally got to come here on the heels of that role. And how old I were felt, you and Rudy? Oh, 26. I feel like. Yeah. I feel like I was, I was 30 when Swingers uh, came out. So I was like 20. I think I moved out here at 26. Yeah. But yeah, so, and you went to Chicago. You were at I.O. You were at Improv right. Olympic in Chicago with right. all those people. So you knew a lot Second of the same City. people that we know in yeah. common who some came out here and some went to New York. And I was and I was washing dishes at Second City, so I got to right. watch all. I got to watch every night Farley on stage. I got to wow. watch great yeah. improvisers like Dave Pasquese and Tim Meadows. Mike Myers was there. Yeah. yeah. When I was there, I was like, it was intimidating because I was like that. Those are just like undiscovered, normal like people. I was it's like, it's also wow. a really hard <laughs> thing to learn. You can yeah. watch as much as you want, but if you if you don't have that 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 little engine inside. Um, that you know doesn't make you any better or worse a person. It's just something you kind of are born with or not, I think. And and how early did you know that you had that? Because just in my incredible research uh, on on Wikipedia, Wiki, um, yeah, yeah the, it says that there's a Bear Stearns stop for you before yeah. any of this. Like, so how when do you transition from? interest in the financial world to going to Chicago to chase a dream based on what I'm assuming you knew you may have had inside, which is I like doing, engine. I like, like there was no pressure on me. So it was like school plays and that was just fun time for me. Yeah. And like improv was great. Cause like if, when people went up on their lines, that was the most fun. Like when yeah. you could be on stage and mm-hmm. get out of that. Uh, exactly. But I never thought it was an option. Uh, I got a, a gig uh, at Bear Stearns because a friend's father uh, was able to hire an assistant. So I was there for a year before the market crashed in the 80s. And it just, I, I just got wrapped my head around that I'd have to work a job like this for my whole life. I, I wasn't enjoying it. And finally, I just I went cross country and I stopped in Chicago on that trip. That's so and, brave. And, and, uh, that's when I saw people doing improv in Chicago. I had a friend who was taking classes at I.O. and at Second mm-hmm. City. And I was like, this is the best. And I was, again, in my 20s. I think I was 22 at the time. Wow. And I knew how to bartend. And I, I hit up the people. I had done some volunteer. I volunteered to be on stage. And they did. The first thing I remember, they interviewed me about my day, right? It was an improv mm-hmm. game at I.O. called The Dream. 
where they interview you about what happened that day, mm -hmm. and then they improvise in front of you what your nightmare is going to be like that night based on your events. <laughs> right? That's so, a great idea. So they did that with me, and I was, you know, on stage doing an interview, getting some laughs, uh, and then and then Chris Farley played me uh, oh, as nice. the. Uh, so wow. that was my first experience of seeing improv. Was yeah. Chris Farley wow. playing me and watching them really improvise? Because you know, when you see good improv, you think, "Oh, is that just shtick they have up their sleeve?" Right. But I know they improvised all because it was all coming off of my interview, and I was completely flabbergasted. What, what, what's funny, John, is, is that, and you mentioned, and I guess was Dell close there around that time? Yeah, must have, yeah, sure, must, that was Dell. Dell must right. have been, yeah. And so you go there because what we all know, and people say, like, "Oh, I watched this movie, and they're such great improvisers." Imp it's people different. who it's different. And people who come from Chicago and people who know what improvising really means, that what a herald is, and to tell a story and to bring stuff back, it's different from like when you watch people who are like, oh, they they came up with a different way of saying dick. Like that's not improvising. A different take, yeah. And yeah. and some people, right? You're absolutely right. And there are some people, like you talk about Vince, like like Vince, like nobody is quick as. But you that and Vince guy. together, let's not forget about you. You guys are an incredible team with that stuff. Yeah, yeah but he's. I, I just hang on because he's just so damn fast. You know what I mean? And <laughs> so just fast. just hold the reality and be a good a good uh -huh. straight man. Maybe I got a laugh here and there. But but you see people like him, and he came out of Chicago also. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, you're right. If people could improvise like a whole scene, yeah, that's different than doing an, a, a freebie take where you could get a laugh. Yeah, where you Curb, get a laugh. Curb does that, though, right? Don't they, they do entire entire shows, right? Yeah, there's yeah no they have script, a sort yeah. of a basic story, and then they, but but I'm oh, talking oh, yeah. more like like the IO stuff, like all that stuff, and then all the UCB guys did, like Amy and, and Matt and Matt yeah. and Ian and, and McKay. Tina. And all, McKay, and McKay was there McKay. when I was there, yeah. I mean, Adam McKay is one of the great improvisers on stage. So that funny. He's funny as hell. Like, yeah, people don't know because he's like a like a award-winning writer, director. I know, yeah. But those people, but I, I would I credit all my, like, knowledge of writing and directing from doing long-form improv because you right. have to edit, you have to write, you have yeah. to see patterns in scenes, you have That's to have callbacks, point. bring scenes back. And when you first start writing, it's really just like improvising with yourself and using all the rules that you learned mm -hmm. around improvisation, heighten and transform, yes mm -hmm. and, yeah, all yeah. those things that you learn just to get you through. When they stick you on stage at a bar and sometimes people don't even know there's going to be a comedy show and you, that boy, you really <laughs> yeah. learn how to swim. Yeah. You know? <laughs> do, you, do you miss it, John? I don't. I really okay. don't. I, I miss the, I would. I would be scared to come up doing improv now because there's like everybody's got phones and everybody. Like there was yeah. so much room to fail. Yeah. Yeah. And in Chicago, there was nobody. You, you could. You know. You, you just do anything. It, yeah. You know. And I feel like there's so much pressure, like on a first film, on yeah. a first role. People make up their minds about people's skill and talent based on the first time out. But you have to get things wrong a lot before you get it right. Yeah, but you know, to that to that point though, you 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 do strike me as somebody who is incredibly courageous, and you, you needn't look any further than probably that that move from what on paper was probably a solid, predictable way to go in your life, which yeah. is going into finance. Um, and and then you said, ah, this might not be a great fit. Let me go try driving across the country and stopping in Chicago and and seeing if I can accomplish my dreams and. Talk a little bit about what what because that's very applicable to anybody listening in any occupation. Uh, just kind of listening to yourself and and tacking left or right based on an right. instinct. Yeah, and saying I'm going nowhere here and I'm not going to be happy. As you said, I could see that I'm not going to be happy. I need to make mm -hmm. that change. And Jason said it's brave. Yeah. What What do you? Is, were you? Did your parents give you a lot of confidence? Did you have? Were you born with it or? They They kind of pushed me. I, I I lost my mom. When I was pretty young. So so that that. Uh, definitely affects your whole trajectory. Yeah. Uh, so, but but I would say that my my folks both gave me a sense of confidence. I had a supportive family. Like if I was ever on stage or did something creative, I was an only child that was very um, appreciated. Like yeah. I never mm. questioned my own. You know, if I if I had something to offer of value, I always you got some attaboys for doing that. Yeah, yeah I did. I did. Yeah, so I, I there's a lot of credit there, and you know, as, as a parent you realize mm -hmm. how important that is now and yeah. with your mm -hmm. kids to do it because that's their foundation, right? That's like, that gives them their base and their stability because they're going to hit headwinds and there's going to be a lot of things telling them they're not doing the right thing. Right. And if they go down to deep memories and they have a sense of worth and confidence, I think that gets them through a lot of, gives them a good keel. Yeah, it's firm, Right? So, so there's that. But then there's also like just realizing, because I was, on the other hand, it was like I was not really permitted to 
study things in school that weren't academic. I was pushed towards academics away from like there are high schools in New York, like performing arts and stuff and art and design and, you know, where it would have been fun. I would have liked to have done that. My folks were no go into the sciences and mm -hmm. you, you have to pick a pragmatic course so right. that you have stability. We didn't come from, you know, we didn't have a lot of dough. So you had to pick a career where you could have some stability. But then finally, like, and so my, all my associations with play was like after school, mm -hmm. taking an elective in college, like it was all positive. I never felt pressure. It was always playtime for me. Right. So when it came time for me to write or do sketch comedy, it was all fun. I felt people who picked the career earlier felt a lot of pressure. I don't know what it was like, Jason, because I know you were at it. You were a pro from the beginning. But I never felt like there was – that I had to compete in any way. Anything I was doing was just a, a lark and – my family got a kick out of it. Jason once told me, you told me this when you were like 12 years old and you had a scene, right, in Little House in the Prairie and yeah. you had to cry and you weren't doing it and your dad whispered in your ear and he said, if you don't cry in this scene, we don't eat tonight. Right. Yeah. No, <laughs> right? Did he going. say that? Yeah. 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 Say that yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we I don't, just, we I, don't eat tonight. Right. And I wrote it on the inside of my wrist. It's still there today. <laughs> it wrote it. Yeah. I hope that's a joke. So, so John, so... First of all, what what part of did you did you grew up in the city? Did you grow up on Long no, Island? No, Queens. I was a Queens, Queens. guy. Oh, you were in yeah. Queens. Okay, great. Yeah, Flushing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and Forest right, Hills, uh, yeah. right near the uh, the uh, Trump wing of that. What's that? Uh, uh, I moved road? around. There's, yeah, it's, it's, it's <sighs> Queens hasn't had a good showing in the oh, last. God. <laughs> uh, anyway, so you grew so you grew up in Queens. Um, Paul Simon. Paul Simon. There we go. Okay, Paul yeah. Simon. Yeah. Ray Sa Romano. Seinfeld. Ray Romano. Uh, we love Ray Romano. Yes, yeah. that's right. He is from Queens. So. So, so anyway, so you move out to New York. You do the Paul, the, the Bear Stearns thing. So now you're there. You're, you're, you're. Oh, I didn't move to New York. I was commuting. You were in Queens. New York. I, I mean, you, you went from yeah. Queens to, to Chicago is what the I The mean. fantasy you, is you moved to the city, but no, that was not yeah, my life. That never happened. <laughs> well, you skipped it. <laughs> so I, I was, I was like Tony Monero. I was taking the, the, the bridge. <laughs> so, bridge and so, tunnel. Oh, right. Just like uh, uh, Saturday Night Fever. Um, so you go out to Chicago. You, you yes. start working at, at Second City and yes. I.O. And you're doing And that's when I was like, this. now I'm doing what I love to do. That's yeah. when my life kicked into gear. Like it was like, it was all gravy at that point. I was working, seating people and washing dishes at Second City and selling t-shirts there and doing, starting And your to do dad, artwork. you're checking in with your dad and your dad's like, how's it going? And you're like, and you're like, I'm, I'm killing it. He loved it too. He loved it. Like he was all into it too. Cause he, my dad was great. Cause he was like, he's like, you're, look, he says, you're 22. When I said, I called him from Chicago. I'm like, I, I think I want to do this. After that show I saw Mm -hmm. He says, you know what? You're you're old enough to know, like to make a responsible decision, but you're young enough that if you're wrong, you could still do something else. And that's that's awesome. And so that was a permission that I got and I really embraced it. What a great thing to say to your kid who calls yeah. excited about something. That yeah. is so yeah. fucking great. So I love that. How does it come about that you write swingers? What was that? That was also my dad, I would say, because he gave me a copy of... Final draft, you wow. know the mm -hmm. the writing I'm software. Not sponsored in yeah. any way by. Uh, <laughs> sure, that's okay. <laughs> I have to say it's a podcast. There's no. Wait, you uh, just got a free sponsor. update. You yeah, just got Tracy, a free update. If you wanna, <laughs> Trace, if you want to write a script, there's a formatting uh, piece of software that uh, where you can type in dialogue. It comes out looking like a script. So it does, it, but that's really it because you you start writing. And if you want to send I, Jason a script? He's got... <laughs> Uh, Sorry. You, you know, you, you start typing and it formats it. And I had read a lot of scripts because I was acting, right? Because I had come yeah. out here on the heels of Rudy, which was, by the way, to get a role like I got in Rudy out of Chicago, yeah. that was so like lucky. a home run. So yeah. rare, though, too. So rare. Because they were shooting local and they, and, and, and they were looking for local and you talent just, to save some And you some just money. auditioned for it in Chicago. Yeah. 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 And I improv a lot in the, in, the, in the audition and David Onspa and Angelo Pizzo, the director and the writer. But so many actors, because I was there too at that time, so many actors would scramble and just like kill for one of those roles yes. of the movies that came through Chicago because yeah. there were so few, unless it was a John Hughes film. You have the John right. Hughes movies, I was just about to say, and I was an extra on a lot of John Hughes movies. You know? I love that. Really? That was, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I got, I got um, called back for, um, what's that Sandy Bullock movie? Uh, While You Were Sleeping. While sleeping. You Were Sleeping. Yeah, yeah, it was an orderly. I am still waiting to hear if I got it. No, oh. yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Huh. Well, um, good story. Well, gonna... So, <laughs> so John, thanks for interrupting, John. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> just kidding, just so, so you get you get Rudy, you get cast yeah. out of Chicago. Move out get, here, get an agent. Get an agent. The producers from that say when you come out, if you come out to L.A., because I thought it was like what they would do, Sean, 
if yeah. you remember, is people would work and live in LA, in Chicago, and then they'd come out here for like pilot season. That's right. right. That's right. Same as New York. We would do it too. We would come right. out for two months. But when I came out, they were like, okay, you got to tell everybody you really live here. Otherwise, they're not going to want to. And then next thing you know, it's like, oh, no, you really do have to move out here. Right. right. Uh, so yeah. it was like, I didn't realize I was moving out there. And, right. and, uh. Uh, and so I would read a lot of scripts and audition a lot. So I, I, I had enough heat off of that movie yeah. before it came out that I was getting to go to auditions. Yeah. And when you go to auditions, you read a lot of scripts. Mm, yeah. And also I would improv a lot in my, cause I was usually like the comedic, like supporting friend. Right. And so they loved if I threw in some jokes and punched up their stuff. And, and then I, then when I got the final draft program, I just started writing. And next thing you know, you get like four pages. And now, now I'm right. writing about me and, you know, inspired by my friends and what we would do hanging out. And there was and like, were you buddies with Vince at the time? Had yeah. You guys I met him on Rudy. Of- yeah, okay. I met him on Rudy. And he I moved out to the, L.A. roughly the same time, maybe? He was out here already, so it was a okay. lot like the movie where he was showing me around and showing me the ropes and wow. here's where you hang out and we go to Vegas and stuff like that. So it was very much inspired by, you know, it's his, it's his you know, and, and everything he says in the movie, even, even if I wrote it, it was based on conversations that we had had or things that he would say, right. exaggerations of it, but it was really channeling his humor and everything that he's, you know, how entertaining, as Will points out, how he is just as a naturally as a person. Oh, and he yeah. was reading for roles that were, you know, he's a good looking dude. So he was reading for all of these, like either leads or the, yeah. or the, you know, uh, the enemy of the lead or, you know, he was always right. playing those kind of, they, they saw his face and didn't realize how funny he was. And so this right. was the first time he really got to be who he was, right. I think, on, on camera. You, 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 I tell you, John, one, one of the scenes that I, I love about, and I think it's un, not unheralded, but in, in Swingers, is the moment when you guys are at, at the, 10, the the former yes. 101 restaurant. Cafe right 101? At, Cafe 101. Yeah. yeah. It was right at the corner of Franklin. And it the, wasn't even that then. So there's that scene, and you guys are talking, and he's looking over your shoulder, and he's sort of like, oh, she's a little baby. Oh, and he starts, he thinks he's, that the woman is making eyes at him and waving. He's like, she's playing a little game. She's playing, and he's doing, yes. and he's waving back at her. And then it turns out she has a little kid. She's got a baby across from her. Right. <laughs> and that is based on <clears throat> something that really happened to Vince. No way. Yeah. Really? In an airport. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Somebody was waving at him. <laughs> And somebody's waving at him uh, and making faces. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he was very <laughs> off-put by it. And then finally they picked up a baby. Because you know how airports have the seats in the rows? <laughs> That's uh-huh. so funny. So that was a... You'll, uh, so you'll have to ask but him about so, that what's one. So, what, but what's so great <laughs> about it is it's kind, of, it's kind of tragic in that moment. It's at the end of the movie and there's so, sort of a tragedy to it. It reminds me a lot... Um, you know, one of my favorite, my favorite film of all time, With Nail and I, there's this kind yes. of tragedy to it that's built in. And there, I think that there's that there in that it moment. It worked nice because it was like, you know, it's, he found somebody, Mikey found somebody who he really connected with. And now he, he wasn't on that journey anymore. He was yeah. ready to, yeah. you know. So I, I think in that way, there's sort of a, a, a a, a disconnect that happens there. Maybe, I don't know. You know, it's not like you think about this stuff when you write it. It right. was honestly like him telling me the funniest thing just happened to me at the airport. And then I worked it into the, right. I worked it into the script. Right. And you don't, you don't really think about this. You're not deliberate or strategic about not what all. it is you put into your stuff. You're just kind of putting in, whether it would be writing, acting or directing or producing stuff that resonates with you. It is your own personal taste. Mm-hmm. And right. um, you've learned uh, how to use uh, more and more and more tools at your disposal as a director um, to communicate that That, but it, that You're taste, absolutely right. Yeah. And it's not conscious in yeah. any way, you know, uh, and you learn to go to things that interest you or that you are drawn to, but you're making uh, instinctive, seemingly instinctive choices but that doesn't mean that they're not valid. It's just that your conscious mind isn't doing it. It's coming from a deeper place. And so a lot of the writing you do or images you're drawn to, you might not even understand why they resonate, but you're mm-hmm. really working through things subconsciously, I think. And that's yeah, for sure. one of the great gifts of being able to do what we do as a career is that you're, you're really working through stuff 
usually from a younger age. But I will say, I will say, and 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 not to embarrass you with a, with a compliment, but your ability to bring the Favreau sensibility to what has become the industry saving genre was something that I think folks will look back on as um, a real gift because had somebody without your sensibility comedically, you know, your, your sense of humanity, vulnerability, blah, 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 to, to, inst to infuse that into a superhero comic book genre is, would, would never mm -hmm. be expected, but right. your ability to kind of Trojan horse that in there. I mean, I guess, I guess that that's my question. How much of that was part of your pitch as a director? Um, when you talked to the powers of B, was it Kevin at the time? I think what, what was cool about here's, here's what's interesting. So I work on elf, right? And yeah. with yeah, elf, we haven't even got yeah, to elf yet. Exactly. <laughs> We're spend some time but that was that. what came before, right? That yeah. was that was sort of my hit that got me as a director. That's, that's right. the first thing that yeah. I did. That, that twenty made, years that, ago, twenty years ago, so and, well deserved. And uh, it was inter what's interesting to me is when you do a comedy, everybody's giving you a million notes about every joke, right? Yeah. Right? right, but not, but they didn't care about any of the action stuff. Right. Not one note about like the sleigh chase or any right. of that stuff. When I went to Marvel, all they gave me notes on was my storyboards around the action sequences, and nobody cared at all about the dialogue. Wow. Uh -huh. So it actually gave me more permission to be, to have my sense of humor in it, because my sense of humor isn't always like, not every joke lands. And yeah. like, if you're expecting it, you got to punch the joke and like, it's not funny enough. But if it's not expected to be funny and it's just kind of dry, yeah, it, can, it can be a grin. Then it's a grin or just dialogue. Like they're yeah. not judging. You're not being right. And then when you when you cast Downey in there to bring in his sauce on top of that, it's uh, it's it's just it's a it's a it's a fringe benefit. It's 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 an added asset that it didn't need to have, right? I mean, if you just had the action, uh, you know, apropos of the only thing they were they were noting the personality yeah. of Marvel comics, like I yeah. grew up with. There was always like a there was always a, a tongue in cheek kind of. Okay, gotcha. You know, it yeah. wasn't as it wasn't as uh, like like earnest as DC, but right. they but they gave you but by by virtue of that they were kind of like yeah, yeah do hit all these moments this action stuff that's really important right and the rest of it you can have that yeah sure and go hit for this it. budget that was yeah, yeah, and hit thing. this budget and right. then the stuff in between yeah go for it if you want to have them be kind of interesting and be quirky and have a joke here and there they're like yeah go yeah. for it we're fine with that and that's I mean that's very freeing I imagine but yeah. about about Elf though I read a long time ago or I don't know when that you set out. I don't know if this is true, you tell me, to make a movie that was a classic Christmas film to be viewed for the rest of time. Like, that was the goal of that movie. And a lot of people, like, go into making stuff like that, but that doesn't happen, and it happened with you with that goal in mind. I mean, that's amazing. It was, That was the hope, you know what I mean? Because you right. think about, like, what's the success of, you know, if you're going to be, because we, we're all friends with Peter Billingsley also. And, right, and he, Christmas story. And he, and he um, you know, he, he cameoed in that. And has worked as a either director or producer with us on different projects oh, yeah. uh, over the years. Uh, uh, somebody else who grew up, uh, a, a, one a good example of somebody who comes up through the business and learns, learns the ropes, and then yeah. continues to you know have an inspired uh, career. And he, you know, it was interesting to know him because he was in Christmas Story. Yeah. And there, you know, the hope is that you could have a make a movie that could sit alongside of a film like that that's in rotation every year. Mm. I don't know if it still works this way. I think it does. Like TV would run a certain there was a certain amount of films like It's a Wonderful Life and Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer and yeah. Charlie Brown, right? So to be in that pantheon of yeah, of um kind of amazing. films that run in constant rotation around the holidays was yes. always the hope. And yeah. we got to be there. And part of it was remember it's also after 9/11. Yeah. So you know, I'm from New York, and 9-11, you know, New York after 9-11, it just, everything, like, the music stopped. It was just, like, everybody thought of New York, they thought of that. And here we were filming a year later. But there hasn't been, I mean, name the last hit, like, Christmas movie that's can sustain what Elf does. I, I can't think of it, unless there I is one. I don't know, and I don't even know if easy. there are movies like that anymore. Like, everything is so on demand now. Yeah, yeah. I know that, like, um, there's a lot of, chatter online about elf every year and i know like even though we didn't have merchandise made at the time i see christmas ornaments and blankets and 
costumes yeah. and ugly sweaters. So it's part of the culture. And now there's also people who grew up with these movies. So that's yeah. even right. odd, stranger for me because it's like, oh, we're, or like I'm introducing, it's our kids' first time watching Elf and they'll like post a video of that. Right. And that to me is the best. Yeah, like that. that's really cool. And if I had to pick one film I'm most proud of, like I, it might be that one because it because it has such an intergenerational thing. It makes people feel a certain way around right. that time of year. And it feels like it's enduring, you know. And right. it felt old even when it came out because it was stop motion and forced perspective. We didn't have a lot of CGI in it, right? Yeah. So, and that a lot of that was budget too. Is like we couldn't afford CGI. I saw the behind the scenes of it too, the making of it, and and it was like what you did with the angles to make Will. It's yes. so it's so easy and simple. It's, it's an just, old trick. Yeah. yeah, like from Darby O'Gill and the Little People. I mean, yeah, that's, but and, and Lord of the it, Rings used it too. It what about what about Phazon in that? How great was yes, Phazon? I know. <laughs> That's that's the if I if uh, I land uh, on a scene from that it's uh -huh. him and Will yeah arguing with each other <laughs> in the North Pole. Um, wait, so how do you so you know I mean we touched on this already, but you're you're part of one of the biggest movie companies now, Marvel, and then you go over to Disney and the Star Wars franchise, and mm -hmm. how in the world did you get over there? Like it's unbelievable. Well, I was working on finishing the Lion King. And, and yeah. those movies take uh, many, many years to, not many, many, but it takes a few years to finish because you're overseeing animation, visual effects, finaling mm -hmm. all that stuff. So you have to be attentive. You can't go off and do something else because you have to approve shots very, you know, as soon as they come out just to keep the machine going. Right. And, but it, it's still not a full-time job because you're not going to set every day. So, so for a, a couple hours each day, you have to be available but you can't go off and do something else because it just takes a lot of meticulous, you know, concentration to get every shot right. right. But it doesn't require all your time. And so I started thinking about, they had talked about Disney Plus launching and that we're going to have TV shows and maybe Marvel stuff. And I had talked to Kathy Kennedy years before when they were, when they first, when S Star Wars moved over to Disney, mm -hmm. was sold from Lucasfilm, mm -hmm. about the notion of maybe working on a movie I was a fan of Star Wars. And so I pitched her. I just went in there and pitched the idea for The Mandalorian of a very simple story about, a. you know, it was the first scene, Bounty Hunter walks into a bar. So great. This happens. This, and so she was into it. They were very busy because they had the last movie of the Skywalker saga that they were mm -hmm. getting ready to release. So that was their main focus. Mm -hmm. So we started talking about doing a deal. Next thing I just started writing. So by the time they actually hired me, I had written four episodes of it. Wow. 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 And so I brought that in. I was like, this is what I want to do. And yeah. I can't leave town because I'm working on, I'm finishing Lion King, which is a big deal for Disney, which is the same parent company, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how we built, that's, that's how we got the, um, the support to build the volume and, and develop that filming system you were talking about. I was going to say, so did the stagecraft come before Mandalorian yeah. or did they come, or the Mandalorian? No, came? after. Because once we started to do Mandalorian, I said, look, here's some tech. There was some technology I was aware of. And nobody, yeah. it was the type of thing where everybody knew you could do it, but nobody did it. Yeah. Right. And so I came in and said, okay, here's the goal. And we, we assembled a group of people, ILM, uh, Unreal, uh, Lux Screens, Magnopus. There were a bunch of tech partners that came together mm -hmm. along with my company, uh, Golem Creations. And we all got together and, and started to work out how you would do this. And we didn't know that you could actually accomplish so many shots in camera. It was an experiment at the time. But we started doing little tests, even when I was working on Lion King, where you'd move the camera, you'd have a TV screen, and you'd see the backgrounds move. And yeah. it, it seemed very promising. So part of that was to allow me to finish this big high-priority uh, film Lion King for them without leaving town. Yeah. And start to prep and work on this, and and that's why I uh, there were other directors that came in. I wrote pretty much all, uh, almost all the scripts. That's something else I learned really is helpful too, is to to have a a, a unified voice to be very involved with the writing process and not mm -hmm. not have it, and, and have you can have other people direct it, but to have a, a constant a consistent voice in the writing uh, is really is really helpful. Make it any, feel like any it. questions for yeah. John bring Favreau? Scotty over. <laughs> Scotty, you want any? What do you want to know? Keep, keep it loose, Sean. Yeah, Baby Yoda's right fifty years old. I love the way he screams hey, at Scotty. Right there. What's going on? Oh, I wrote down yeah. a question. You did. Let's hear the yeah, question. Let's, let's hear it. Well, you ask it. You, you ask Tracy. Got to get on the mic here. A guest question, caller. Okay, so here's my question. I know it's eat the mic. You've probably been asked this a thousand times. There we go. So I apologize. Um, 
obviously, The Mandalorian is such a phenomenal show. And we love Star it. Wars, and we love it so crying, much. Scotty? Uh, and it's a great show for filling in the gaps for some of our favorite characters from the original Star Wars, you know, movies like Luke and, you know, who's made a few appearances. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I'm sure some of us fans were wondering, could we possibly see any of our other favorite characters show oh, up maybe oh. uh, in upcoming episodes who we know to be alive it's, at this point in time? It's like we're at Comic-Con. I know. <laughs> Hi, I'm Scott well, you from know, Los Angeles. You know, first of all, I can't, I can't really answer that one. Um, answer right but, but I would say that part of what we try to do with The Mandalorian is... I'll still answer. I'll, I'll, no, he can hear. He can hear. Oh, he on can. His phone. Is it He's one of those things? Where I'll, I'll I'll hang up and take the quest, take the answer off air, like on NPR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so uh, I I think the the important thing is is for us is that there's so many different um, areas of Star Wars and and that we could bring all of it together into one show and pull in things from the sequels, from the prequels, from the original trilogy from the animated, and even the extended universe. Yeah, it's kind of, it's amazing. It felt like Star Wars was was splitting into a lot of different areas, and part of what we want to do is pull it all together because, you know, Star Wars is a big tent, you know? Yeah. And there's, and whether it's kids who are growing up watching Clone Wars or millennials who, who had the, the, the prequels, like everybody's, everybody's invited to the party. Yeah. And so sometimes it makes sense. In the case of Luke Skywalker, as we were figuring out if he had to bring him to a Jedi and who that Jedi would be, it made it wouldn't have made logical sense for it to be anybody but Luke. So yeah. we always want the story to point us there. How about that CGI on Mark Hamill just come? I mean, that was unbelievable. That was crazy. What's also crazy is if you look at the difference between the first time we did it and the next time we did it, you'll see yeah. how much all of that yes. AI-based deep It's like fake. Mark Hamill was 20 years old again. I mean, it's nuts. God, you fucking people need to read a book. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> All right. What you know what? The... You know what we gotta talk about? G Force. Yeah. That's the movie we did together. <laughs> you, you son of a We're both yeah. in it. We are both in it. That's we the only both... time we work together. You, me, Galfanakis, Galfanakis. Bill Nye, uh... You know what Galfanakis told me after that? I, I he said that's the that's I may I promised myself after that film that I would never read a script high before I accept the role. <laughs> is what he said. That's the end of that experiment. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's let's honestly let's let's let's. Does everybody know this. what G Force is? Hell, why are you moving off of this? Oh, this is well, I want to get to prehistoric planet. By the way, all okay. my kids, all my kids planet? have gone through twenty. Uh, have gone through like six months where they've loved it when they're like four. Every single one of my kids. It's a bunch of gerbils, right? No, no. Yeah. it's guinea pigs. It's guinea pigs. What I, said. I was one of the guinea pigs. He I was, was the comic the relief. Pigs. I was the farting guinea pig. I'm sure your friend, your your kids like me. Uh, that loved, I was one of the loved, favorites, they right? Lo- they loved that. I mean, they all loved it at various stages. So. Hurley. I play Hurley. Anyway, okay, right, so let's how go did on to prehistoric, prehistoric Now, how did that come about and explain to, to Tracy in Wisconsin what the hell Tracy, it is? Tracy, there's some, a little something called Apple TV Plus. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and if you get it, there's a there's a, uh, a documentary series that looks an awful lot and sounds an awful lot like Planet Earth with David Attenborough narrating, yeah. uh, done by the BBC and Apple TV uh, that I'm uh, uh, I'm involved with, and we create a documentary as though you were able to bring a camera back into the prehistoric the Cretaceous period. Yeah, it's, wow, yeah, that's and cool. and and the reason I'm working on it is, you know, uh, it was it was a project that they were talking about doing, uh, partnering up on. But because we had developed technology to create a CGI that felt more cinematic and photoreal through all of our innovations on uh, The Lion King, which uh, if, if you recall, there was no actual photography in that. That was all CGI, but we built a, a, a VR environment that we filmed in. So we actually had the whole crew in VR filming segments around these animated characters. Jesus. And that's part of why it looks like a, hopefully like a live action movie. Try, try to explain that a little bit just so, so, so Tracy can understand what that means. Because I, I, I think building the environment that you're filming in in, in VR is right. not an easy concept necessarily. No, but it was the way to get... Like my mom's at home. My mom's at home. She's seventy. Six? No, sorry. God, she's almost 80. Well, make sure you get it right. Yeah. Sure she's thrilled. <laughs> yeah, no, she is. Alex, she doesn't mind. She's not right. offended by stuff like that. So she's at home. How would you explain it to my mom, who's 80, what that means? <laughs> sure she's not 85 <laughs> or something? Calgary? What, what province? Toronto. 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 Toronto
I don't, <laughs> I don't know. That team. <laughs> she's an Argo fan? Uh, she's a big Argo fan. Okay, so, but, but explain it to somebody and to Tracy. So virtual and, reality yeah. is something where you wear goggles and right. wherever you turn your head and move, you perceive through hearing and sight as though you're in that, immersed in that reality. So she it's like a video that. game. She, she understands, understands, understands that. that. Okay. So we create the environment with artists as you would for CGI. We create the environment uh, and the characters. And so if you're wearing your goggles, you could walk around and look at and interact with the environment and the, cre and the, and the characters. That allows us, like a multiplayer game, to bring the crew into that virtual environment. And so you could have a cinematographer and a gaffer in there setting lights up virtually. You could have a camera <laughs> operator set up a camera. And we would, you know, if you came to our stages uh, down there in Silicon Beach, down there off Jefferson, Culver City, that area... We had set up their camera systems without cameras, dolly tracks without cameras on them. We had sensors. So all your crew is wearing goggles? So some of them would be wearing goggles to scout, but you could also watch a screen because a, okay. because a dolly grip isn't necessarily having to see a fully dimensionalized version of the performer. They just have to look at their marks. So they yeah. would tape marks off on a track and move the chassis and that gave the whole thing a feel as though it was being filmed in live action. Wow. So by building these tools, it gave it that live action feel in addition to really good CGI that MPC was able to do, the, the house that we work with. So we had all these tools that we built around how do you make Lion King look live action? And we used those tools and applied them to the task of how do you create a show that looks like a documentary filmed in real life of dinosaurs? And so if you look at Prehistoric Planet, if you have Apple TV+, Plus, you could take a look at it. We've got, uh, you know, a season up. We're getting ready to launch another that we're just finishing up now. And, uh, and you could, or you could, you know, look on, look on trailers if you don't have that and take a look at it. And then we had David Attenborough and just his voiceover. Yeah, it just makes cool. it. And it's all based in real science, which, again, I geek out on because I get to learn so much about the behavior Archaeology has made so many breakthroughs in the last few years where you start to learn about how they reared their young, what they ate, where they lived, that they had feathers, they were colorful, they had, you know, it was a whole different sense of what dinosaurs were than when I grew I up. I forgot about that time. What, what were we doing? Was it a couples retreat? And yeah. um, and I went in your trailer you and walked you were in my watching. I remember this. Yeah, you were watching this this series of uh, videotapes at the time, I think, That's or a DVDs. Good it was DVDs. It was a box set. Of, yeah. It was called Big History. Yeah. Big History. Uh, David Christian would teach a course in it. It was one of those, it was before, remember, it was before like podcasts or before yeah. digital. So, so we are watching on the viewer in the, in the trailer. And Big History, I, I'm sure it's still available, was a fascinating course because it starts off with the Big Bang, yeah. mm -hmm. talking about the world through the lens of physics, and then through the formation of the stars and planets. And then it talks about chemistry. And then it talks about geology as the planets formed. And then it eventually talks about anthropology. Yeah, and, and comes all the and, way through history yeah. to today with complex Will, systems. Will, you would love this. And the patterns. Yeah, yeah this yeah. sounds amazing. It was just, I mean, we just go in, I just go in there and we just watch the TV for like hours. Took, Jason, yeah, you said that, that, that uh, behind, when you were like 16. Here we go. Uh, on Ventura, <laughs> behind the Ralphs, you had a lot of chemistry <laughs> on the Big Bang, right? You had a lot of chemistry on... <laughs> Right, you were 60. <laughs> and then I told you I had three callbacks for the show, The Big Bang. Yeah. Um, um, no, oh, but yeah. uh, you've always been interested in. In uh, I love that uh, about you. You're, you're. You're. There's. There's so much about you that is um, uh, beautifully silly, um, and 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 without sort of pretense. And then there's a, another part of this super big brain in you, uh, and you just. Uh, you're a real well, inspiration, nice. Mister. Yeah. And also. Did you? Does everybody know that we worked together? One of my first jobs in town. God, that's right, right. Well, was we were it, on was a, a pilot, pilot together. Yeah. We did, wait, I think I did. I get fired. I think I got no. fired from that show. I think I, I might be confusing with another one, but I did get fired off. Of you a were pilot. the big star. You were when they got you. That was the big. Uh, no, you were the I big think win. I, I think I we, got. We never I went got to a, air, by the way. But it right, was a I got a big phone call that I was going to be replaced. And then 48 hours later, I heard that they were actually not going to pick up the show. So I, I, had, I, had, to, I had to live <laughs> the honor with, of being fired. Yeah, before. being fired. And then the whole maybe show maybe without got fired. Jason. No, <laughs> let's not do it at all. Is oh, that what happened? Wait, what brutal. was it? What was it? It was we played comedy writers on a like 
proscenium multicam sitcom pilot right. back in, like, it must have been like 92, Did Robbie three? Benson direct that? No, am I thinking of something It may else? have been. He directed a pilot that I did. Was it Maybe. the same one? It might have been that See, one. Our brains are going. Because he, he directed a friend, my friend's episode. I think he did direct. No, he directed, I don't know. Anyway, it was. Yeah. Uh, I, I love. I loved you then. I love. We you got now. to work together, man. Uh, that was the big time for did me. Did you? Do you so remember sad. when you were working on Iron Man two? Yes, Justin Thoreau. And when, Here well, we I was going to say when you were reading this, when the pages did he have sleeves back. Yeah, then? when the pages were coming in, could you get the sense they were written by by arms with no sleeves? I noticed on them? that nobody had <laughs> sleeves in the yeah. script, yeah. which I was <laughs> curious about. That was one thing. I'm like I don't know if that's going to play. <laughs> that's, his, that's his hallmark. And the dog was going to That's his start. hallmark. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, no, he was great. He was a writer. He had worked with, he was a writer on Tropic Thunder. He and, yeah, he and, he he and Ben still wrote Tropic Thunder and then Downey won. Yeah. Downey was very big. Um, you know, he was like, this is the guy that could, you know what I mean? Because it, it needs to be a voice too for, for Tony Stark. It wasn't just, you know, a lot of it came from him in the first one. Yeah. So I think that he had a really good experience with Justin. He's a very smart guy. And like, under, again, another one who's an actor. Actor, But writer. you talk to him about a lot yeah. of subjects. He, yeah. knows a, he's, he knows a lot about a lot of things. And, and just a really, you know, has a really good ear for I saw, dialogue. he sent me a picture the other night, by the way, from New York. And great. And he, I love, you know, Thoreau's one of our best buddies. But he did send me a picture from New York out at night. He thought he was, he thought he was taunting me. And, I, and it was six degrees in New York. I knew because I'd seen on the weather. And he was inside this establishment with no sleeves. I was like, hey, man, it's fucking <laughs> If I had guns like that, you, know, you couldn't too. get sleeves on me yeah, either. I would, too. I would, now, too. Uh, John, what does it take for you to get excited enough to uh, treat us all to some of your great acting? Or are you just so yeah. satisfied with No, with, I love doing creative... it. Well, with a guy like you, but you're where funny as sit? hell. But where does it sit in your temptations, you know? I mean, is it does it have as much of a pull as, yeah. as directing does? It depends who it's with and what it is. And yeah. it's not the same thrill as in the beginning when can I do this at all right yeah. yeah and you just want to make sure that you're in a situation where you're where you're with people that you're having a good time right because right. if you're not i don't know that i could fake it as yeah. well as you need to yeah and and also like i love I, I, look when you get to work on your own stuff mm -hmm. you start you have a lot of control over a lot of things right and so you use that part of your brain. And when you go on somebody else's set, if you bring that energy, it's terrible. Like you yeah. have to be a great, and actually the people I've worked with who are the best actors are other filmmakers because they show up and they just want, where do you want me to stand? Right. Uh -huh. They're like the first ones on their marks. And like, right. that's how I am exactly. when I go on somebody else's set. And I like to do the, Mar I've been doing the Marvel stuff. Yeah. And I think that's been really cool because I yeah. to keep that connection. A lot of the characters that were around are gone now and i'm like one of the ones who's around since the first iron man and i'm still there for the kids who grew up i'm like the uh -huh. hagrid of uh of, <laughs> of marvel that's hysterical uh, you know like a like a, hopefully like a a friendly goofy presence that offers some comfort all right last question what with all the smart stuff and great stuff that you're doing um what, what what's what's the dumbest thing you, you find yourself doing on a, on a daily or weekly basis do you have you have any guilty pleasures that uh the audience would be surprised by any well any, there's a podcast crap. i listen to religiously yeah. oh rot uh, your brain my my uh, that's my dirty my my dirty pleasure yeah. my guilty pleasure that qualifies uh, no i i i uh, i do love the the podcast and it's yeah. um <clears throat> it started off as something where i didn't know if i liked it just because i knew all of you mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and it was like i was like and i don't get out a lot so i was like oh this is like hanging out and i'm just yeah. not talking yeah like i got to <laughs> hang out with you guys <laughs> <laughs> and I just I had no pressure to be funny, no pressure uh -huh. to go, you know, yeah. I didn't have to valet the car bits. or drive. Uh, and then now that it's such a, a, a success and so many people, when I mentioned I was going to do this show, they were like really like jealous, like, oh my God, that's so fun. <laughs> How do you get, what are they like? Uh, so nice it, it's really great to watch you all do something that, something that you did for fun yeah. because yeah. you liked it for and you sure. were interested in it turned yeah. into one of the most successful projects for all of you. You know what I mean? That this is like the such a win. The most successful for me, 40 years. This is like the biggest, Same. loudest thing I've ever yeah. done. And Same. I love that this moment Same. allows, it rewards passion and authenticity that yeah. other people will seek it out and they sense it and they'll find it. And the, how relaxed everything is. And 
all the things that we've all worked on together apart, there was this pressure in the background of if you do this, you'll get to succeed or we'll let you do more of this or we'll pick up this pilot if they, if we like, if it tests well. Yeah. And then this is the most unstructured, it, the concept <laughs> is so, is like one surprise guest right. and yeah. we're going to talk and, <laughs> and everybody's drawn to it. And it just shows you that all those rules and all those structures and the gatekeepers, all of that is a function of, the dynamic around the economics of the business. And then here you all come through and do something where it's all of you hanging out. And as somebody who's hung out with all of you, it really feels exactly that way. And, uh, and that people good. get a glimpse of it and that they enjoy it. And it actually turns into, there's a business model to support it and a way to distribute, I think is really encouraging. And, and to people out there, you know, who are, going to, you know, trying to figure out their way. It's a real lesson. Yeah. I, I was actually just saying that this morning. It, it was a real lesson to me that, um, it shouldn't be a surprise, uh, that the thing that, uh, that I think for all three of us that we have pushed least on, um, or, or yeah. pressed yeah. least on sure, in our careers sure. has, has ended up being the most successful thing. And it's, it is a great lesson. You just sort of just, Follow your instinct and just walk down the hill. And well, you know. we've never, as you know, and and John, as you got to witness when you were waiting when we were first doing the intro, we never talk about what we're going to talk about. Here's the other thing we've all worked on. We've all worked on the Kyle Gas poker game back in the day yeah. about 15, <laughs> 15 years ago when we all played. Yeah. Um, and uh, but it's very much that same dynamic, right? It's just sitting down at a table and just uh, having a laugh, and we never. Never, we never talk about what we're going to talk about ever, truly. Well, thanks for having me on it. And, Dude, uh, yeah. thank you for fucking coming on. Your story is it's, awesome. It's really cool. And, yeah. I, and my, I might add, when I see you and we hang out, how, how, however few and far between that is, I'm always so thrilled to see you and so enamored with you and, uh, and everything that you do. I just, it's just, I'm so giddy because I'm just like, you know, from the first time a, we met, good dude. Twenty decades or two decades ago, I mean, you know, it was, it's really cool. Thank you. Also, also, John, I will implore you for from a guy who started doing uh, swingers again, which is so great, and then you went and you've gone to such lofty heights and all the MCU and 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 then the the Star Wars and all that stuff, and then in between that you do the Chef. I implore you to. Keep going back and please, and give us another like indie like story, oh, like a you. small story, yeah, please, because yeah. you're yeah. really good at that. You're really, really good at that. Thank yeah. you, man. Yeah. Thank yeah. you all, and you know, keep keep doing what you're doing. It's it's uh, it's it's really wonderful, and it's wonderful also to feel like I could just jump on something like this and I feel like I I've been hanging out with you all the, all the way through, yeah. even <laughs> though it's been a one way street, and especially through the lockdown. You know what I mean? Through the yeah, pandemic, yeah. it was really nice to have your your voices and your presence and it just everybody was so isolated and and I, I felt like it was really a comforting reassuring and it's just it's just enjoyable and i'm glad that it's you, your guys are still going and that everybody recognizes and we and cool we can't is. wait for the next avatar that's you too right yeah that's me i'm, I'm you do that too. Yeah. 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 Uh, sean that's please cool. check Thanks. your text please oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, for sure uh, John, well, thanks for being a part of it, buddy. Yeah, uh, thanks, truly, John. Um, yeah. Really appreciate it, and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon in person. All right. Bye, John. All right, buddy. Bye, John. Bye, Bye pal. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Oh, he's going to do it. He's going to shit out of that. It. He's going to slam it. Shut the slam. There it is. Shit on that. No, slam it. I have a little switch on my thing I had installed just for Smartless. That's <laughs> over my camera. See? <laughs> nice. There it is. Uh-huh. Perfect. Boy, I sure like that fella. Yeah, that was huh? great. I mean, was so good to check in from him. You forget about how many things he's done in sort of different shapes and sizes, right? Well, but and Amazing. I mentioned the thing I mentioned it earlier, comparing him to like George Lucas in the sense that like he not only tells great stories and makes things that we all want to see, but like the tech part of it too is like yeah. there's not a lot of people who do that. And he doesn't make a big thing about letting people know how many important yeah. things yeah. Um, he's touched, uh, how many things that we love that he's done that we might not realize he's been a part of. I, I just think that's really, I think that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, think about it. He's, uh, he wrote Swingers and starred in Swingers with Vince. And then he directed Elf, one of the all-time, an absolute Christmas classic. I mean, in their top two. Yeah, for sure. Of It's Christmas a Wonderful classic. Life and Elf. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
And, and the swingers, Iron by the Man. way, but before you go past that, like that, that kind of started a bit of a comedic style and tone yeah. and well and, it set the tone called, for all the marvel movies well no no it's sw swingers it just sort of set oh, the swingers. tone for a lot of some of the comedies that 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 populated what was it the the 90s um yeah. Yeah. you know and like him and vince starting to work through all those and stiller and owen wilson and jack black and you sort of that wheel mm -hmm. that it was sort of birthed I oh, think the right in there. Comedy wheel, remember right? the comedy wheel? And then, yeah, and as no, you were I saying, know, okay. then um, uh, Elf and uh, what that did for for that films of that of of, of that season, and then uh, and then of course, yeah, what he what he did to set the tone for Marvel um, and all the other derivative uh, films in that genre is um, it's it's pretty impressive. So um, we didn't talk about the film. <laughs> Oh, here we go. I love the way he's teeing himself up. Uh, it's talk. unbelievable. It's un <laughs> hey, guys, it's have you ever thought about... You know, it's so, it's so, <laughs> so embarrassing. And it, by the way, wait, with this we, kind of build-up, better be... Fun. It's really good. Be we didn't talk about the film that he actually acted in with Jason, which was... Um, and Melissa McCarthy, which was... By identity thief. By no. No. <sighs> No. Nope, no. rejected at the gate. Do you see how timid rejected. he was about it? What he the fuck? You couldn't even say it above a whisper. You're what so ashamed the of it. Fuck. Is, is Postmates at the door? Do you have to run? Is that why you're I, trying to get it? Do you have to pee? Do you? Do. What, if, sorry, before we let you go, because that we're not we're, we're rejecting that. What's on the docket for dinner tonight? Yeah. You'll love this. You'll love this. You'll love it. You'll uh, love it. You'll love it. It's roasted uh, chicken with uh -huh. vegetables. Scotty, what, what are we having for dinner? <laughs> oh, fuck. What, what else? Stuff. And some other stuff. Some stuff. And like mashed potatoes. Oh, mashed potatoes. Imagine, so like a full, potatoes. well, basically like a holiday dinner tonight. Let's it actually honest. does look like a holiday let's, dinner. Let's yeah. be honest. Is it chicken with mashed potatoes or is it mashed potatoes with chicken? Chicken. <laughs> And then what do we have? And 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 then so no dessert, right? So I don't know. We'll probably have chocolate chip cookies. But listen, if I once I'm done eating all of that and I have to leave the table, Here you know, because to, to because you can't eat another bye bye. Yes, <laughs> pathetic. Bye. Smart. Yes. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Michael Grant Terry, Rob Armjarv, and Bennett Barbaco. Smartless.